Welcome to the program today. Mondo Gonzalez here in studio, and I have with us today um, Jonathan Feldstein, who lives in Israel and has a lot to share with us about what is happening in the nation of Israel, as well as some other ways in which uh, Christians and Jews are working together, again, in, in great ways, so stick around. Welcome back, everyone, and, and here I am with, with Jonathan Feldstein by Skype. So, Jonathan, welcome to the program today. Thank you, Mondo. It's really great to be with you. So, for our, our audience here, uh, kind of share a little bit about your background. You and I met uh, about 18 months ago, a couple of years ago, down in Dallas at a, at a prayer breakfast for Israel. And uh, again, now here we are having a, a Skype together. So, kind of give our audience a background about what you've been doing and even the Genesis 12-3 Foundation, etc. Sure. So I grew up in the States and lived for most of my first 40 years between New Jersey and Atlanta, a little bit in New York. And um, my father was born here in Israel. Well, no, I'm not here. I'm in Atlanta as I'm speaking to you. But uh, my father was born in Israel. And since I was a kid, I always wanted to live in Israel. I knew somehow God uh, put on my heart that I needed to live in Israel, not just for me, but to also raise my children. But I was a child when I understood that. And so it it took a lot longer than I had anticipated. And at nearly 40, my wife and I and our five kids at the time, uh, 20 years ago, this year, in fact, uh, packed up our house in New Jersey. We put it in a 40 uh, foot shipping container. And several weeks later, it met us in Israel in a rental house in a town called Efrat in the G Judean mountains. And we've been living there ever since. So we have a six child born, two of our kids are married. We have three grandchildren. And I would say that even with the war that's going on, life has been such a blessing. My kids thank us for moving. And it's really just been amazing to be part of, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about prophecy watchers, uh, right? God, God said he was going to bring us back. And here I am, a Jewish man in 2024, 20 years living in Israel, raising a family. God said he was gonna bring us back. And here we are, and it's just an amazing, amazing privilege to be part of that. Um, years earlier, when I was actually living here in Atlanta, uh, right after college, God also had a very fabulous uh, opportunity that he just put on my heart. It was ultimately became a calling, and that was to build bridges between Jews and Christians. So over my career, I didn't really understand what that meant until I got to Israel. I think I needed to be in the land in order to create those relationships. And I worked for a number of organizations really successfully with tremendous grace and privileges, outreach uh, to Christians and being super well received. I think I'm still the only Orthodox Jew who's ever spoken at the Billy Graham Library, which has been a tremendous privilege. But I turned away from working for other organizations because I found that too many we're really only interested in monetizing relationships, which I call a faith-based ATM, rather than actually creating relationships. So in 2017, the Genesis 123 Foundation was born with a mission to build bridges between Jews and Christians and Christians with Israel in ways that are new, unique, and meaningful. And what that means is that we're doing things different. We're not repeating what other people are doing. We're not trying to compete. We're looking for different ways of engagement. We started a fabulous program called Run for Zion. It's the first Christian program around the Jerusalem Marathon. The book that we're gonna talk about also, an unbelievable project and just different ways to engage Jews and Christians. But for me also, and I'll say this, it's important that it not be a one-way street. We need mutual engagement. You understand, of course, that the name Genesis 1, 2, 3 comes from the verse Genesis 12, 3. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Everyone remembers that. Not everyone remembers that the last third of that same verse, the same sentence is the families of the world will be blessed through you. That's my responsibility. That's, and we do it in so many different ways. And, it, and, and these are not about money. These are about relationships and creating lasting deep relationships. And I'm tremendously excited doing the things that we're doing. Yeah, no, that, that, is, that, is, that is tremendous and awesome. And what have you found as it relates to, you know, 
going out and, and doing doing it a little bit different. As you mentioned, there's there's other organizations that have been that have been active. What what have you found is you know in the sense of doing it doing it different? Is it is it harder? Is it easier? I mean, how, how's it been working? Well, I mean, real candidly, it's harder financially because I'm not looking. Every relationship is not a transaction. It's not I'm not looking for a dollar sign or euros or pounds or or when I went to Africa a year ago, it wasn't even, it's one of the poorest African countries that I went to, Congo, and I spent 12 days in Congo. That's clearly not a place that you go to monetize a relationship, but Africa is super important. And the history of the Jewish people in and out of Africa in biblical times and in, in more modern times is super significant. So um, we've been blessed and I'm running a, a group called Africa Praying for Israel, which has about a hundred participants and about 20, which is all, nearly a third of the nations of Africa. And we're engaging and we're creating relationships and we're doing some radical things together. Even when, I'll share this, even when after October 7th, two of the uh, hostages who were kidnapped were Tanzanian agricultural students. Both of them were killed by Hamas. And because I have relationships in Tanzania, we were not only able to be present virtually to comfort the family, but a, a dear friend of mine who's a bishop there was present at the funeral, spoke at the funeral, and was received on behalf of the state of Israel through Tanzanian media. And this is just, it's, it's so important. I think it might have been, I think it might have been that last time we were together that there was a uh, big shortage of baby formula in the United States. Remember that? Yeah, yep. So I, I say in quotes, smuggled in 200 pounds of baby formula from Israel, Similac with Hebrew writing on it. And I brought it to, and I brought it to Texas, which is my first stop. And I gave out 200 pounds of baby formula to families and churches in the Dallas Fort Worth area who couldn't get it on the shelves. And so when I thought about that, I thought, wow, this is amazing. Because the scripture is blessing the families of the world. How incredible it is. First of all, how scary it would be as a parent if you have a baby whose, whose main source of nourishment is formula and you can't find that anywhere. So I was able to buy, I don't even remember how many cans of baby formula, but 200 pounds, brought it in, and now it went into the kitchens and to the pantries of, of Christian homes all over the Dallas-Fort Worth area with the same Hebrew writing that the verse, I will bless those who bless you, uh, is in. And we're just doing lots of things like that. Um, it's super important in general because this is not, this is a divine relationship. This is, the, this is a repairing of relations that go back, that were broken nearly 2,000 years ago with the advent of the church. Immediately, as soon as the church was created, it became a little bit anti Semitic, a lot about replacement theology and purging the Jewish roots of Christianity. And, and that came with a bad history over thousands of years. And we're in a place because people see the prophecy, because people understand the significance of restoration of Jewish sovereignty in the land of Israel with the state of Israel. We're, we're, we're breaching that rift that's nearly 2,000 years old. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, my, my undergrad is in Jewish studies. And, and so I remember, you know, studying so much of Jewish history and even church history in really how uh, kind of really, to be frank, is to be how embarrassing it is uh, to see the way that, you know, again, the, 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 the first the first Jewish Christians were, were Jewish. I mean, they were Jewish. Yeah. And then to see right. it to see it shift so quickly from the, the foundations is is as and as we know, the, the rest is history in that regard. You know, you brought up you brought up the October 7th um, you know, yes. terrorist attack and, you know, Obviously, you're there. You live there. Talk a little bit from your perspective about uh, how it affected you guys. Yeah, that was a horrible day um, on a whole lot of levels. And excuse me, because I'm getting choked up. When you, when I have the opportunity to kind of think about it and reflect, it's impossible not to be very overwhelmed. What happened that day was horrible. We live about 40 miles north and east of Gaza. It's very rare that we get rockets from Gaza, but that morning we were waking up with the air raid siren um, from the building, the school top, uh, top of the school behind us, sending us to the bomb shelter in our house four different times that morning. Um, 
we because we're Orthodox Jews, it was a Saturday. We didn't have our phones on. We didn't have the TV on. We didn't think that it was life threatening for us, whatever was going on. And we speculated about it. So we just maintained that our, our, our Shabbat as best as we could, speculating about what was going on. Nobody imagined what actually happened. Um, and until at four o'clock that afternoon, my 25 year old son, who was a newlywed, he was married only three months before that, came into the house. Um, he, they, they've been living in my daughter-in-law's parents' house for a couple of months, which is fortunately in our neighborhood. So we're all friends and that's great. And he said, Iman Ab, I have 10 minutes. I have to get in my uniform and, and uh, bring all of my equipment and I have a ride. I've I'm, I'm been called up to the Gaza border. Uh, he knew a little bit about what was going on, but nothing to the magnitude of what happened. Uh, we knew that my son-in-law would be called up. They live also in the same town, about a seven minute car ride. We had been with them the night before. We walked home, it takes about 45 minutes to walk from their house. We knew my son-in-law would be called up and he was. Um, his military base is on the Gaza border and was one of the ones that was overrun by terrorists. So my son-in-law was told not to come down until the base was safe, which if you know, you don't know my son-in-law, but he's an amazing man. He feels guilty still today that he didn't go down earlier to take on the terrorists, to stop them, to kill them. Um, that's his nature. And my son went down, my son-in-law went down, my son-in-law took our car and for two weeks we, we were down a car uh, because he needed a way to get there. And and I'll, for, for four months, they were both in, away from our family. Most of the time, my, my daughter with her three uh, children who were five and under, that was very stressful. My son, who was away from his new bride for, for most of their marriage. And then two months of it, he was actually in combat in Gaza. And we are still experiencing national trauma, but having a son in combat as a paratrooper, knowing where he is, knowing that people are getting killed every day, um, very candidly, we didn't sleep very much at all. Um, it's still stressful, it's still traumatic. It's something that probably will become part of the DNA of the people of Israel for the next 50 or 100 years. Yeah, and, and we know that, you know, at least watching it from over here, that, you know, it's not the, the task, the mission is not completed just yet. And, um, you know, and as we know, there's a lot of, you know, inappropriate international pressure uh, being put on Israel right now to to try to, uh, you know, clean this up and and Correct. make make agreements with Hamas, which is absolutely ridiculous. And so uh, to me, w watching it and, and, it, and I, I can apologize, I can apologize to you on behalf of the current administration, you know, trying to do what they're doing and enforcing the Israeli government. Uh, to make peace with people that have no interest in peace. I mean, we all know that. I, it's, it's, it's actually very much a definition of insanity to me of, of, of why, uh, why, they, uh, why they don't get it. And, and I can't say why, but anyways, that's a whole, that, we could talk a long time on that. But what I, what I do want to do is, is I want to I talk about this new project that, that you've been working on and, uh, the, and the book. But we're going to take a little break here, everyone. Uh, and we'll be back in a few moments where you can see how to get our, our monthly magazine, which again, we cover, we cover Israel in depth in, in a variety of ways and other topics. So take a listen. Everything that we're doing at Prophecy Watchers is vital because Bible prophecy is coming to pass right before our eyes. And it has never been more important for believers to understand what the Bible says about the days that we are living in. In case you haven't noticed, the whole world is spinning out of control, but we are not surprised because many of the things taking place were prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago. That's why we want to offer you a very special subscription to our magazine, The Prophecy Watcher, that will keep you on the cutting edge of Bible prophecy. Stay informed on prophetic world events. Follow the nuclear threats from Russia and Iran. China's march to world domination, the likelihood of another global pandemic, the rise of artificial intelligence and transhumanism, war in the Middle East, the UFO phenomenon, and the latest technology preparing the world for the mark of the beast. 
The Prophecy Watcher magazine features articles from leading prophecy experts like Gary Stearman, Mondo Gonzalez, Thomas Ice, Randall Price, L.A. Marzulli, Bill Salas, and many others. With your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers, you will receive 12 issues of the magazine in either print or digital format. You will also receive 10 bonus DVDs that feature in-depth teaching on the Ancient Book of Enoch, Heaven and the New Jerusalem, the Biblical Case for the Rapture, a look at how God put the Gospel in the stars, what really happened at the Tower of Babel, and Ezekiel's prophecy on the Battle of Gog and Magog. This special offer is available anywhere in the United States with free shipping included. Don't wait. Pick up the phone right now and call the toll-free number on your screen or visit us at prophecywatchers.tv. Stand with us today and help us take the message of Christ's soon return to the whole world. Welcome back everyone again here in studio and I have through Skype Jonathan Feldstein who has been a part of a very fascinating, I think one of the best new books that, uh, that we have seen, as many of you in our audience know, we have a lot of books on Israel, uh, you know, past, present, future, even a lot of books that cover, I mean, Israel is an extremely beautiful country, but this particular, uh, this book is a different take on things. And so, you know, Jonathan, if you will, the book is called Israel, the Miracle, and kind of talk about how this book came about. It's amazing. The book in itself is a miracle, and I don't say that in a way that's immodest. Um, it's, we're, still, we're still in the midst of Israel's 75th anniversary. There, even with the war, there's a huge amount to celebrate. Of course, we didn't know that there was going to be a war five months ago, but in October of 22, I have been speaking to a publisher about a completely different book project, which I hope we will put back on the radar. And I sent him an email and I said, hey, David, what do you think about the idea of putting together a book of essays by 75 Christian leaders all over the world writing about why Israel is significant to them and to all Christians in Israel's 75th anniversary. And he loved it and improved upon it a, a, a thousandfold by saying, but I don't see it as a book of text. I see it as a coffee table book, something with short essays that people can read, but beautiful pictures that people can also interact with. That was, that was October of 22. It's I've learned now, I knew nothing about publishing books, that it's unheard of that anyone would put together a book in a year like this, much less less than a year. From October until August the following year, when we delivered the files to the printer, nine months, it's not a coincidence, conception to delivery. The, the books came off the printer, we printed them in Israel, We've just actually ordered our second printing. And I wanna tell you about that as well, because it's significant to the war. Um, in nine months, we, we delivered it. 10 months, they were printed. And then we had a war two weeks later and, and that delayed getting them to America. And, but the book is stunning. The essays are powerful. There's not a bad essay in there. And I don't say that, I didn't write them. I just, I just said to all of these authors and they're incredible authors in there, write why Israel's significant. What does it mean to you that we're celebrating this? And we got some powerful stuff that make people cry. It's there, some of them are that deep. And now, as I'm speaking to you, it's the very beginning of my book launch and media tour that was delayed because of the war. We had to print thousands more copies because even organically, the book has been selling so well that we're running out in our fulfillment center. So now the second printing is being done in conjunction with the print shop at Kibbutz Be'eri, which is one of the communities that was overrun uh, by the terrorists and in which hundreds of people were either killed or kidnapped from in this past October. So we're, we're not only committing to donate the proceeds into projects that bless Israel and, and our response to the war effort, but we're actually investing in a business on one of the communities that was most devastated. You know, talk about, you know, you mentioned earlier to me that, that this is a very historic book. Kind of talk about uh, that. Yeah. 
Well, you know, no one's ever done anything like this, Mondo. There's never been a compilation of, of the breadth of Christian leaders from all over the world. We have every continent represented except Antarctica. We have multiple ethnicities, both genders. I don't want to suggest that there's any more, but a, 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 a well, a good representation of men and women, demographic, geographic, um, far too many denominations in Christianity for me to say that we have them all represented, but we have a great cross representation. And no one's ever thought of something like this before. And I'll say this, 25 years ago, when we were celebrating our 50th anniversary, I think it would have been harder to put together 50 bona fide essays of Christian leaders who were really out there supporting Israel than it was to put together 75 for this year. It, it's a fabulous process. I mean, we have we have what I refer to as Pat Robertson's last testament on Israel. We bumped his essay during the printing process, right before we went to the printer, in fact, is when he in, when he passed away. So we moved his essay up to the front out of alphabetical order. And his is powerful. His is powerful. It's personal. Um, we have Anne Graham Lotz in here, Ben Carter. Person. We have the former president of Guatemala who made a decision as a Christian to move the embassy from, of Guatemala to Jerusalem. We have a, the former chief justice in South Africa. Uh, anyone who's following what the South African government is doing now, bringing uh, charges of genocide against Israel in the International C Court of Justice, which is obscene. So we have the former chief justice of South Africa, a black man, who supports Israel so much as a Christian that he receives death threats as a result of that. Um, goodness, I could go on. There's Michael Brown, um, people who people who are well-known Christian leaders and people who are not well-known Christian leaders, but whose leadership and whose powerful words are no less significant. Yeah, I think I think it's amazing too, you know, looking at the book myself and 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 thinking in terms of, you know, <clears throat> there is so much confusion and to me especially after october 7th and, and going around the world and seeing i mean i've always known you know again studying it that there's anti-semitism throughout history and, and even currently but i was shocked to see this this anti-semitism that has been you know i guess it's been there just under the surface and then watching all of it explode onto the, you know, these, these pro Hamas rallies and other things. And, and I'm like, what in the world? I mean, I always knew it was there, but to see it there and that level was very shocking. And even among, amongst uh, certain places within the Christian world, Christian denominations and others. And so this book to me is so extremely important to show, to show why, and also to counteract I, again, what I would say is very bad theology in the Christian world that would be in their minds thinking in, in these ways. So the book to me, it, it, Israel the Miracle, really is, it's a miracle in many ways, just like you, you, Israel itself, but also the book is needed so much now. Yes, it really is. And, and because of the war, I think it's even more relevant. I'd rather have it be less relevant and not have a war. Mm -hmm. But we have Richard Kemp, Colonel Richard Kemp, who's a retired uh, military in, from the UK. And he writes, his essay is entitled, An Exceedingly Excellent Army, I think is what it's called. And oh yes, and of course, that's the case. But now when you read Richard Kemp's essay, and you overlay that in the midst of a war, the people don't know what's going on. And even look, even Christians who love Israel, all over the world, they're inundated with really negative things. And they don't know mm -hmm. why what they're in and they know it's not true, but they don't know why it's not true. So to be able to take a book like this of 75 essays that write range between, I think, seven and 800 words to maybe 1200 words. And because of the beauty of it, because of the pictures, I saw this when I brought home the proof copy last spring um, that was put together here in the US. And I saw my four year old grandson who can't read English, who can't read Hebrew, but he picked up the book and he was engaged with the pictures. So I can put my grandson on my lap or anyone can put their grandchild or child on their lap and read the book, read the essay with them and engage. It's not simply a book that you're going to read and be inspired by 
and then put up on a shelf. It's a coffee table book. It's stunning on the cover. It's engaging. And I'm looking, I'm looking at it as I speak to you because I get overwhelmed by it. But I, I'm, so, I'm so grateful that God get, put this on my heart and we were able to pull it off because this fits exactly with the mission of Genesis 1, 2, 3, which is doing things that are unique yep. that no one's ever done before. And I, that doesn't make me great. It just means that God was working through me and I had the privilege of putting it together. Yeah. And I, I will say for you know those of you watching that if you have never been to Israel and maybe you might not ever get to go, I mean, I hope that you would. You know, I've yes. been 10 times myself and it's been amazing. But th this is, you know, I've seen a lot of things in my life, but this truly is the best coffee table book I've ever seen as it relates to the quality of the images and the pictures and the variety of what uh, you might see uh, in the land of Israel. So we're going to take a little break here and you can you can see how you can get this Again, the best, has my endorsement all the way, the best book ever done on the land of Israel. And again, why Israel is important. In 1948, after being displaced from their promised land for over 1,800 years, Israel was born in a single day, fulfilling Isaiah's prophecy. That message is still coming to pass today through the ancient prophecies of the Bible. When Israel rejected Jesus as their Messiah, God used the Romans to expel them from the land and scatter them to the four corners of the earth. He chose to honor his covenant promise to Abraham and brought them back to the land in unbelief, but their deepest desire for peace and safety in their ancient homeland has eluded them, just as the Bible said it would. And then October 7th came and the whole world watched in horror an event described as the worst thing to happen to the Jewish people since the Holocaust. That war is now escalating as multiple nations, including America, are demanding a ceasefire and the removal of Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. And the battle is far from over. Multiple battles and end-time wars appear to be just over the horizon. Our guest today is the driving force behind what we believe is one of the most interesting and fascinating books ever written. This 75-year anniversary tribute is a work of art designed to celebrate all the joy and blessings Israel has brought to the people of the world. It features 75 Christian leaders who share their love for Israel and share delightful, inspiring stories of their connection with the Promised Land. Filled with colorful pictures of God's favorite place on earth, this hardback coffee table style book will soon become a personal favorite. As you read the words of men and women like Joel Rosenberg, Pat and Gordon Robertson, Anne Graham Lotz, Ben Carson, and many names you may not even recognize, and many names you may not even recognize, all who have their own personal stories to tell, you'll come to realize what a special place Israel really is. The Miracle of Israel book is available for your gift of $75 or more, with shipping included anywhere in the USA. A significant share of the proceeds from this book will go directly to a new Messianic ministry in Texas, the dream of our friend Olivier Milnek, who is at the forefront of fighting anti-Semitism in our country and around the world. Just call the toll-free number you see on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv. If you are one of our international friends watching today, please note that additional shipping fees will apply and all prices are in U.S. dollars. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for supporting the work of Prophecy Watchers and thanks for your love and support of God's chosen people. Welcome back everyone. And again, talking here to Jonathan Feldstein about the book, which you just heard about, and I hope you do get it. And one of the other things I think is, is awesome here, Jonathan, is that the proceeds, you know, are, are, are geared towards a very good cause. Kind of, we, we mentioned it earlier, but talk a little bit more specifically about where the proceeds are going and how it's helping Israel. Right. So on October 8th, we launched the Israel emergency campaign and I, and I did it with a very strong foundation, but realizing that we are in a war and I didn't know where the war was going to unfold. So the proceeds from the book are going to support civilian uh, uh, security for communities like mine. I live closer to an Arab, Palestinian Arab community than any of the Gaza border area communities. And there are dozens of communities like this. 
civilian security as needed, drones and other kinds of equipment. So it's what happened on October 7th can and will never happen in communities like mine. We're supporting social welfare for soldiers. So we actually just, was it two weeks ago? Maybe less. Uh, we donated our 1,000th warm winter jacket to soldiers. And it's shocking that people don't have them, but that's a reality. And we do other things, many, many more soldiers. We're providing hot soup that I make in my home. Big pot of kosher soup. There's a, you, if you've been in a hotel, you've probably seen shakshuka, which is poached eggs in, tom- in a little spicy tomato sauce. We do that. We did serving soldiers lunch and other things like that. One of the big needs that's that's ongoing is the need for um, helping kids at risk youth because they've seen and suffered things that children shouldn't ever. And so this is going to be an ongoing project that we're that we're funding. And so all the more reason we need to sell a lot more of these books. And another just a quick example was right after the war, many many communities have been evacuated. Many still are. We supported for most of a month, an entire community, putting them up in a hotel, giving them food, giving them activities to a friend of mine who switched over his um, design, his home interior home design showroom into a clubhouse for kids from this community for most of a month. And, and it was, and it's all from, it's, again, it's not me, Jonathan, I'm just the, the, person in charge, the face man that you get to speak to, but this is from Christians and Jews donating as little as a dollar all over the world, and what a blessing that is. Yeah, amen, and, and Jonathan, appreciate your time today, and you know, and, and for those of you in our audience, you know that we've been uh, strong supporters of Israel for, you know, again, for forever, and so here we are, and you know, Genesis 12, 3, you know, if you bless Israel, you'll, you'll be blessed, and so I think if you haven't uh, uh, you know, thought, thought of ways to be a blessing to Israel. This, this is one of those. And so, as always, appreciate you watching this week. Uh, appreciate your prayers as well for what we're doing here. Trying to get the word out. Again, Israel is in a very tough situ- situation right now. And uh, again, a lot of people have been evacuated, especially in the north. That's not, that whole situation is not finished yet either. But anyways, be praying for Israel as always. I mean, this is exactly why we're here. We appreciate the friendships that we have. So appreciate you watching this week, and we will see you next time.